in the sub 4 meter SUV segment, everything's been said and done because you have nine contenders in that segment to choose from. And now with the arrival of the Renault Kaiga, you have 10. 10. Has a nice ring to it. Is the 10th entrant into the sub 4 meter SUV segment the most complete of them all? What makes it complete? Well, we are going to look at 10 things to find out exactly that. First, the price. The Renault Kaiga is the most affordable sub 4 meter SUV you can buy today in the market. Its prices start at 5.45 lakh rupees and go up to 9.5 lakh rupees, which means it's undercutting all of its rivals by lakh, if not lakhs. Well, all except its platform sibling, of course, the Nissan Magna. Nonetheless, the Renault Kaiga on the price front is a complete winner. Design. Now, on this front, I'd like to talk about three things. First and foremost, the family look. I know in pictures you're going to look at this and say it looks like the quid, but the point is Renault has managed to make a cohesive family look and it works here on the Kaiga. In fact, that brings me to the second point. This looks beefy thanks to all these cleverly sculpted lines and the creases and the blacked out sections. The face looks muscular, upright and properly beefy. And if you go down the side, you'll find that with those chunky roof rails and the 205 millimeters of ground clearance, its SUV cred is very visible. Which brings me to my third point. It looks sporty. Look at the way the roof line kind of flows towards the rear and comes to this spoiler which juts out and looks really cool. And then there's the tailgate itself which kind of sweeps in further backwards and tightens it. And at the same time, while it's looking all curvy, it's also got the chunky elements like the tail lamps which stick out towards the edges. So yeah, this is quite attractive, especially from the rear. And what's going to make the Kyger all the more wow, irrespective of which variant you choose, is that Renault is going to offer the dual tone color options right from the base variant. What about the wow features on the outside? Well, those stunning C-shaped LED tail lamps are available as standard. However, those LED headlamps are available only on the top end variant, as are those 16 inch diamond cut alloy wheels. Those roof rails can also take 50 kilograms of load. Impressed or looking for more? If you're looking for more, then Renault has five accessory packs that you can choose from. These include features such as front parking sensors, chrome highlights, rub strips and puddle lamps too. The SUV pack for instance adds a silver skid plate up front, adds body cladding to the side and even adds cladding onto the tailgate. Interesting. And that should help complete the Kyger's appeal for you. Now, when you step inside the cabin, it is going to seem familiar. It's going to remind you a bit of the Triper in the sense that the layout is very clean and simple. All of the switches and controls are familiar, are easy to reach out to and use even on the go. But to give it that little splash of specialness, it has a few differences. For instance, the infotainment screen kind of floats on the dashboard. Then there are the switches for the air conditioning system, which have LED elements inside it to display the information, which look cool. And of course, for the storage bin between the front seats, there's a tambour door on this top-end variant. I really shouldn't be complaining considering the price point it's at, but looking at the exterior, I thought the interior would have a little bit more of specialness. You know, by way of colors, by way of materials, slightly richer materials would have been great. Take for instance, the steering wheel. It's really handsome, but there's only a small batch of leather even on this top-end variant. Wow features. I'll tell you what made me go wow inside the cabin, the drive modes. 
you get eco normal and sport and these the really cool part is you get them on all the engines and all the transmissions as well which is exciting because this also pairs up with the digital display for the driver a seven inch crisp screen which has lovely graphics and also gets a couple of widgets depending on which mode you're using and we'll talk about that more when we're driving the car actually and aside from this you get those clever touches from Renault of course like there's ambient lighting up here in the front which is switchable we wish that it had a few more elements at the back and no we don't wish that it danced to music or whatever and aside from that you get of course the fully automatic climate control with those displays and then there's that Archimus tuned four speaker four tweeter sound setup which actually sounds pretty good This is connected to that 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system which is quite crisp and gets wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay which is really easy to set up and use. Of course to make the most of the wireless experience you also need a wireless charger for your phone which is only available as an accessory. Even a smart air purifier is available as an accessory. But what keeps the Kyger from becoming complete on this front are the features that are missing altogether. Some of them are comfort, convenience and safety features. For instance, there is no auto dimming IRVM, there is no TPMS. You do not get ventilated seats. You do not get cruise control. There is no 360 degree camera here either. And yeah, there is no sunroof either. And talking about safety features, well, you get ABS with EBD, dual airbags and rear parking sensors as standard. And if you step up to the top two variants, you get four airbags over there, which is a big plus. There are isofix mounts and of course, from accessory packs, you can get front parking sensors as well. However, I would like to point out that there is one issue that you need to keep in mind if you're not going for the higher variants, and that is the rear window is actually very small. So looking out from the rear view mirror, you can't see very much because it's also very high, which means a reversing camera is pretty important in the Kaiga. And that aside, it's also interesting that Renault has chosen to give load limiting and pre-tensioner enabled seat belts only for the driver, irrespective of which variant you choose. Also, unlike its sibling, the Nissan Magnite, there's no tire pressure monitoring system, no hill hold, traction control or ESC on the turbo variants of the Kaiga. That's not very complete in my books. Now, as a family car, the Kaiga is going to feel pretty complete because just look at this. The amount of room on offer here is really impressive. Even for a six footer, you've got ample knee room, headroom, in the front, in the back, and if you're planning to travel through your breast, well, you can see there's a flat floor, you've got enough width even to do short stints within the city comfortably. Though there is one thing that you need to keep in mind, this slightly kinked up window line and this small window area can make it seem a bit tight, but that would be on longer journeys. And talking about longer journeys, if you really need to stow a lot of stuff while traveling, you've got lots of storage space here, like this massive storage area right under the armrest. Not very practical for cups and stuff, but it's a lot. If you want more practical spaces, there are plenty around the cabin. And here too. To complete its appeal as a family vehicle, the Kyger is coming with 405 litres of boot space. That is huge. So just put up with the fact that the loading lip is high and the boot is deep. Get that accessory luggage organiser. It'll make things easier for you. Now, let's get going. The Kyger is available with petrol engines only. However, the engine and gearbox options are quite complete. There's the naturally aspirated 1.0-litre motor which is available with a 5-speed manual or an automated manual transmission, which isn't offered on the Nissan Magnite. And just like the Magnite, the Kyger also has the turbocharged 1.0-litre petrol that makes 100 PS of power and is offered with either a 5-speed manual or a CVT automatic transmission. So, is it fun to drive? Well, we've only got the top of the line, 
one liter turbo petrol which makes 100 horsepower and it's available to us only with the manual transmission right now. So it's a good combination to ask that question with. I mean, have that question answered with. Well, one thing's for sure, this engine is punchy. But what's giving it that added dash of excitement are the drive modes. Because when you put it into sport mode, you actually get a slightly sharper throttle response. So it feels a bit more urgent. The steering feels heavier. Well, I'm not a big fan of that aspect. Because in normal mode, the steering is lighter and it feels quicker to steer because of that. Whereas the throttle is not as sharp. If you're looking at the more practical bits, the eco mode softens power delivery a bit. So when you're driving around in city traffic at low speeds, you'll find that that softer response is better, especially when the power comes on, which makes it easier and smoother to drive. Since the gear shifts are a bit notchy, we can't help but look forward to driving the CVT version of the Kyger soon. Now, if we had the automatic variants on offer here, the drive modes would also change how the gearboxes behave so that it would be either more efficient or more responsive. The one thing that's missing and that would have changed the experience dramatically on the Kaiga would have been better sound insulation. Because right now it feels like you can hear a lot of what's going on, not just under the hood, but also underneath. So, how much of an SUV is it? Well, this Renault feels very SUV because this suspension setup can tackle bad roads beautifully. And the best part is, at lower speeds, let's say in the city over broken roads, it feels just as compliant even then. Which means its SUV quotient is completely Well, if you're wondering about the sporty quotient, well, it's not the most connected machine in terms of the feedback and the feel, but it is planted and confident even when you chuck it around corners. And well, that completes our look at the Renault Kaiga. So, is the Renault Kyger the complete sub for meter SUV? Well, for that, it would need an added dash of premiumness. If you look inside the cabin, a bit more in terms of colors. If the materials could be a bit richer. If the feature list could have a little bit more wow in it. And while driving, if it could have a bit more refinement by way of better cabin insulation, then it would be. However, if you're looking for a sporty looking, peppy, practical SUV that is comfortable by way of the space on offer, the ease of driving and of course its ability to tackle rough roads while coming in at an incredible price tag, then this Renault Kyger would be the complete SUV for you.